my channel. I'm Rachel, the owner and creator here at The Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Today is Friday and I have a thrift flip for you guys. I grabbed a few items out of my stash and gave them all makeovers for spring. I think they turned out super cute and I can't wait to show them to you guys. I hope you like them too. So without further ado, let's get to today's project. For my first project, I am going to be making over these three resin plaques that I recently thrifted. I really liked the shape of these and all of the beautiful detail, and I wanted to do something with these to kind of enhance that. So I am starting with a base coat of Rust-Oleum 2X spray paint in espresso and just making sure to get down into all of the detail with that paint. Then I set them aside and let them dry completely before bringing them inside and starting on the next step. Now, rather than paint these all the exact same color, I chose three coordinating colors that I think go beautifully together, not only for spring, but as we transition into summer as well. Those are DIY's Cake Batter, which is a really pretty yellow, Farm Fresh, which is this beautiful uh, blue color. It's got a little bit of green in it. And then, of course, one of my favorites, good old Crinoline, which is this beautiful creamy neutral. Now I did end up giving each of these plaques three coats of paint mainly because I was trying not to put too much on at a time because I really didn't want any paint gunked up in any of those little details in these pieces and I ended up switching over from my big brush to a smaller brush just so that I could work the paint a little bit easier into some of the details and if I did get too much paint in a place and it began to pool uh, the little brush definitely made it easier to clean that paint back out again. Once I had all three coats of paint on these, I set them aside to dry and then it was time to move on to my next step, which is distressing. Now I know distressing isn't for everyone. However, I really wanted to bring out some of that beautiful detail on these pieces and distressing is a really simple way to do that. So I am using the wet distress method, which is simply wetting a cloth. It can be a, an old t-shirt. In my case, I use a shop towel and I just get it damp and then I rub over my piece anywhere where I don't want the paint to be. So anywhere I want to see that brown color peeking back through is where I'm rubbing with that towel. Once I'm happy with my distressing, I set my plaques aside to dry again, and then it's time to move on to sealing my paint. Now, as I've mentioned before, DIY paint is clay based and it is highly porous and it needs to be sealed anytime you use it. There are several methods that you can use to seal this paint. I've used Big Top. You can also use liquid patina, uh, but my favorite way to seal this paint is with wax. And in this case, I'm going to be using both clear and dark wax on my plaques. The dark wax is going to also help bring out some of the beautiful detail in these guys. So I start with a coat of clear wax and it is really difficult difficult when you're dealing with a piece that has this much texture to get your wax down into all of the crannies but uh, the soft bristle brush really helps and you just have to kind of push until you get everything waxed up really well. The paint actually changes color as you seal it so you can kind of tell where your wax has gotten to and where it hasn't which is helpful and then you just wipe back the excess as best you can with a shop towel. I also really try to not overload my brush so that I don't leave any extra wax gunked up in any of the detail. So again here you can see I'm putting on that clear wax, just a thin coat. You can see how the paint is changing color as I'm going over it with that wax. And I am just going over all of the little nooks and crannies, making sure to kind of push the bristles of my brush down into all of the grooves so that every square inch of this little thing gets sealed. 
Then I just take a dry shop towel and wipe back the excess clear wax and then it's time to move on to the dark wax. Now I do thin my dark wax with a little bit of mineral spirits most of the time and I usually just dip my brush into mineral spirits and then tap the brush into the dark wax and the mineral spirits just thins that wax out enough so that it isn't quite as thick and gunky and it moves around on the piece a lot easier. So I'm just filling all the grooves, uh, just giving this one coat of the dark wax, and then again, wiping back the excess with a shop towel. Once I completed this process on all three of my plaques, they are finished and I absolutely love how these guys came out. I think they're so pretty. Uh, these colors coordinate so beautifully together and I think they're the perfect accent for a wall for either spring or summer. Project two is this cute little cedar birdhouse that I thrifted a long time ago now. And I have actually been trying to come up with an idea for this thing for a while. I had actually pulled it down to put in one of my thrift flip videos quite some time ago and could not decide what I wanted to do with it and ended up putting it back on the shelf. Then a couple weeks ago, I was watching Jamie Ray Vintage and her husband, Zeb. Uh, they were painting a bench that was going to be going outside and they were using her new cottage color called Pacific and she was talking about the fact that these paints are rated to be outside and when she said that little bells went off in my head and I thought you know I could paint that little birdhouse with some of the cottage color and then it could still be used outside which is great so I am painting this with DIY's cottage color curated by Jamie Ray Vintage uh, and this one's called Americana. I only needed to go over this with one coat of paint. It gave me very good coverage over that cedar. And then I took it out and did a really light sanding with some 220 grit sandpaper. I wasn't necessarily trying to distress this birdhouse. I just wanted it to look a little bit more time worn like it had actually been outside at some point in its life. Then I moved on to decorating my piece and for that I grabbed a transfer set by Redesign with Prima that I really love called Tiny Flowers which includes colored flowers on one of the sheets and then colored and black kind of like pencil drawn flowers on one of the sheets and then one complete sheet of just the black flowers. Honestly, I had had a hard time trying to figure out what I wanted to put these little black flowers on and I thought this birdhouse would be perfect. So I cut some of them out and then just spent some time arranging them the way I wanted them and then one by one began peeling back the backer sheet and then burnishing them down with that uh, little wood piece uh, until they were completely adhered onto my birdhouse. I love transfers. They are such a simple way to add so much detail and beauty to a piece. And I have to say they go on so nicely over the, these cottage colors. I think basically because it has a built in sealer and it is self leveling paint and it just makes the transfer process that much easier. 
So again, just laying my transfers down one at a time, burnishing them down onto my piece with that transfer stick while I peel back that sheet of vellum, just being slow and careful to make sure I don't accidentally peel up any of the transfer with the vellum. And if you ever do that, just lay your piece of vellum back down and re-rub that spot to lay that bit of transfer back on your piece. Now it's recommended that once you put your transfers down that you go over them with some sort of a sealer. You can use wax or any other kind of top coat and for this application I chose to use Sweet Pickens Top Coat in Matte. And the reason I chose Sweet Pickens Top Coat is because it is a very durable sealer. It dries clear and it will help protect these transfers as well as the paint underneath from the weather once it goes outside. So I just gave it one good coat of the top coat and then set it aside and let it dry. And as a final step, I needed to replace the little latch for the door. So I did that and then this birdhouse is finally finished. I am so glad I grabbed this out of my stash and got it done. I absolutely love how it came out. My third and final project is this cute little round pedestal table that I picked up just recently on my thrift run. And I absolutely love the shape of this. I think it's so cute. It's nothing antique or anything like that. I think it was made by the Bombay Company. Uh, but I absolutely love these little tables and I can't wait to get it painted. Had a little bit of a trouble getting the sticker off the bottom. Had to break out the lemon oil so that I could get the goo removed. And then I washed it up with my cred cutter first and then gave it a little bit of a rinse with some clean water then it's on to paint and for this i chose a diy's skeleton key i absolutely love skeleton key i think it's such a beautiful color it's kind of a blue with just a little bit of gray in it uh, kind of blends with just about anything and it's great for all of the seasons I did end up giving this little table basically two and a half coats of paint. I didn't go over it with a complete third coat, but I did touch up some areas where you could still kind of see uh, the brown shining through a little bit. This was such a dark color to go over and the finish is very, very slick. Once I had finished painting it and it was completely dry, I went ahead and gave it a really light sanding with some 220 grit sandpaper. Now if you followed me for a while, you know I'm not a big fan of brush stroke marks. I do tend to go over most of my furniture pieces with sandpaper just for that reason I like to have a nice smooth finish to my paint. I also did some distressing while I was there and once I was finished with the sandpaper I went ahead and grabbed a damp shop towel and wiped everything down really really well and I also did a little bit more wet distressing. 
And like I said, this is the same procedure I use on almost every furniture piece that I do. I usually do a little bit of sanding and then I wipe everything down very, very well with some clean water, especially if I know I'm going to be using a transfer. Normally, that is fine. For some reason, this piece, it wasn't. And so here I am cutting apart this beautiful transfer set because I didn't like the way that it kind of had an edge to it. So I was very careful cutting around these flowers, just trying to make this uh, exactly how I wanted it, laid everything out, uh, peeled back my backer and put that transfer down. And then I began rubbing and you guys, I rubbed and rubbed and rubbed and I could not get this transfer to stick. It just would not. I don't know if it's this particular color that doesn't like to be sanded. I wiped it down so well there was no sanding dust that I could see. Uh, anyway, I just really don't know what happened, uh, but it would not stick. I ended up peeling this transfer off re-sanding my table to get all the remnants off of it and repainting the top of this table and then I clear coated it with some spray sealer. Then I moved on to this transfer set called Salon de Diane. This is also by Redesign with Prima. I absolutely love these beautiful dainty feminine little roses and this time with the paint sealed the transfer went down like a dream. I just rubbed it down with that transfer stick and peeled back my vellum. I had no trouble getting this to stick this time. I was so happy. Once I had my transfers down, I went ahead and burnished them really well with some vellum. Uh, this helps make sure that you don't have any air bubbles, that none of your pieces aren't stuck down like they should be. And it also helps alleviate some of the little halos that tend to be around the transfer itself. Then it was on to sealing the rest of this little table. Although the top was sealed with the spray sealer, I did not use that on the rest of this piece. I really wanted to wax it. Uh, I definitely wanted to go over this with some dark wax, especially since I had distressed back to that uh, dark brown uh, tone that was under the paint. I really wanted to give this more of an aged patina. So I'm going over it with one good coat of my clear wax first just applying that with my soft bristle brush and then wiping back the excess with my dry shop towel. And once that's done and I have the whole piece covered and I do go ahead and go over the top of the table again with clear wax, not only to protect my transfers, but because I do want to use a little bit of the dark wax on this part as well. Uh, so I just, again, apply it on and then wipe it back. And then I grab out my dark wax and my small little brush and I begin waxing it with the dark wax. I do mix in again a little bit of mineral spirits with the wax. It helps it move around a little bit easier and it almost goes on more like a glaze rather than a wax. So I just make sure and cover my entire piece one section at a time and again just wipe it back with that shop towel. And then I went ahead and did the top as well. And then this piece is done, you guys. And after a lot of uh, trial and error and definitely more error, <laughs> I am so happy that it's finished. And even though this transfer set was a plan B, I really do love how it looks on this table. And I'm glad that it came out the way that it did.
for today, you guys. I hope you liked my projects and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. I so appreciate that. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and then just hit that little notification bell so you don't miss anything. And then don't forget to drop a comment below and let me know which of the projects in today's video your favorite was. And then just as a quick reminder too, any of the paint and products you saw me use today can be purchased through me at my website and that's www.TheEclecticCottageSpokane.com. I am still waiting for my DIY paint order. I am hoping it's going to be here on Tuesday. So fingers crossed for that. And I also have an order coming in from Redesign with Prima. It is their brand new uh, quarter two release. I can hardly wait to show you guys some of the great things that are in my order. So uh, at some point you'll be getting a little product reveal for those items. So stay tuned for that. Uh, let's see for Oh gosh, Tuesday. For Tuesday's video, I am probably going to be giving you guys another thrift haul. Uh, I am going to be having our big event though here tomorrow for spring. I'm probably going to get some footage of that. So I'm hoping to bring you guys kind of along as uh, the vendors show up and show you some of the nursery and how everything looks out there. And I might even throw in a shop tour. Uh, the, the shop is actually pretty well set. I went through yesterday and made sure everything had prices and so everything in the shop is looking a-okay -okay at the moment so I might actually uh, give you guys some footage of that as well. We'll just see how this how things go I guess over the next couple days and fingers crossed we actually do find some cool stuff on our junk run on Sunday. We'll see. Anyway I hope you'll join me on Tuesday for the video. It'll be fun no matter what and until then I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Uh, I hope you're getting some sunshine. I know we are getting a little bit here. Temperatures are a little bit cold, but still the sun is nice to see. Anyway, I thank you guys so much for being here. I so appreciate it. And I hope to see you back here on Tuesday. Thanks again. Bye.